Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Slappy McPhee here at the Retro Arena, and we are here today with Arena Conclave Episode 6. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about today, and actually while doing so, I'm going to be showing off and just kind of hanging out here in the uh, soon-to-be public beta build for the Rock Pro 64 from Pine. So first of all, i um, like to say thank you to everybody in the community. We've got a lot of new people that we've been seeing um, constantly coming in every week, especially since we dropped version 3. And then also anticipation as well for the, the Rock Pro 64 build and also the N2. So some of the items that we're going to be going over today are going to be talking about our release schedule and how that's going to kind of change here coming up. We're going to be uh, talking about a new beta policy and how that affects the community, uh, what should be considered to be in positive ways. Um, talk a little bit about through um, our Patreon supporters, uh, the ability that we've got with some new hardware that we're testing. Um, discuss a little bit about the Rock Pro 64 kit, which is also known as the Rochambeau case. Um, We'll talk a little bit about the pending N2 beta release, some XU4 updates, and then uh, actually discuss finally some plans for some changes that we're going to have going on for our website. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is actually kind of show something off here. It's nice about the new build that's going to actually be for the Rock Pro 64 and also the N2. You know, we, we don't have a desktop environment baked into our XU4 build mainly for two reasons. Number one is, is that we just didn't really feel as if we were getting a satisfactory performance out of it. Um, and then also, you know, the, the fact that there is the OGST, which is the Odroid Game Station Turbo build, right? And that's available over on the hard kernel for, forums, excuse me, by a really cool developer, uh, goes by the handle of Maverick. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and shift on over to the desktop. So this is a fresh install of the desktop. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is plug in my USB key that I have a bunch of my test ROMs on so I can kind of go over that and do a little bit of gameplay etc but yeah see so this is kind of a nice feature right having the desktop make things a little bit easier if you have stuff on a USB key or an external hard drive um, and be that you want to transfer to an external hard drive that's connected to the system as a transferred method or just to a large SD card etc this makes life a little bit easier for that so what am I going to go ahead and do here is select these and take a look at my properties I haven't expanded yet on this so my uh, memory card actually isn't really wide open for storage right now I gotta actually verify that real quick. I apologize. Let's see here, I got about six gigs. And as we can see here, we got around 20 gigs. So let's see, what's a couple systems I wanna mess with while we're doing this here? So yeah, so while this is doing that, um, one of the things, uh, as I said earlier, we'll just kinda start to roll through here, is that we're gonna be doing, we're toying with a new update release schedule so because we have limited resource time especially with the summer coming up um, not just the summer here 
in North America, but just in general, right? Uh, a, a lot of the team and the developers are pretty busy with their regular lives, their work, um, other projects, etc. So we're gonna move over to a more predictable quarterly release schedule. However, part of that will be that the exception for it will be the situation where we have major uh, items that have to be addressed that have been identified, right? Um, this is going to also be less stressful for us when it comes to testing and it gives a little bit more time for us to work on it and, and we are able to hopefully put out a little bit more of a regular schedule and let people know what's going on with it and essentially kind of come into what you would see typically in the wild for standard software maintenance schedules. The next item that we'll go ahead and discuss is the uh, new beta policy. So with the new beta policy, what we're going to be doing is that when there is a newly supported board, so as an example, the ROC64 Pro board, the Odroid N2, um, we don't plan on necessarily tackling many more boards other than the three that we now have, which are the XU4, the Rock Pro 64, and the N2. There's some considerations possibly for a couple more that have come up recent. Uh, however, you know, we're, we're pretty set right now. And once again, with resource uh, limitations, you know, we have to be realistic on what we can truly support. So... The plans are, and it'll begin with the Rock Pro 64, that betas will be public, right? However, they will not be updatable. So what does that mean? That means that the setup script update, et cetera, is going to be disabled. We, um, we will have messages in the setup script. You know, different components of it will still be available. However, since it's a beta program, you know, and this isn't really ready for prime time and not a true public release version, that's how we're going to approach things. Issues will be able to be documented on our GitHub so that we can address them. However, once the issues are resolved, they'll be placed on a newly downloadable image when we feel that that new beta image is ready. Because at the, at the core of it, right, the betas are there for testing and to let the community kind of feel and see you know, what's going on and, and what our progress is. When it comes to donator and Patreon impact, essentially supporters will have the full updatable access to the release candidate that will come after the, the public betas. And they'll also still have timed exclusive access for the public release for a period prior to the public release. When we take a look at this as well, that means that we're gonna send you, you all a friendly reminder right now that asking when will the beta be available, it's gonna be met with silence or if it escalates, the administrative measures are gonna be taken. You know, we, we made it perfectly clear. I know that there's a lot of new people out there in the community, um, so they're not really familiar with how we do business, but you know, we're not gonna be any different than Recall Box, Batacera, OGST, Laka, Retropie themselves, right? They, you know, when people, you know, ask, they don't, they don't give you an answer because when it's ready, it's ready. We ask for your patience and that you respect our policies regarding that. All right, so before we carry on with this, let's go ahead and see about closing that out. Go ahead and eject. So the cool thing about this is, you know, I'm going to go ahead and for now, just safely remove this. Um, one of the things here I figure I kind of do candidly as well or is uh, go ahead and pull this up. Now, we are aware, of course, that there are other browsers. You obviously will have the freedom to install what you want, but Chromium is what comes uh, provided by the, the Debian OS base that we get from Pine. So talking about that, right, um, one of the things that I do want to mention is the fact that... Um, when it comes to the betas themselves and availability, another reason why they won't be updatable is that sometimes we will be notified by Pine that there's actually a completely new OS base that they give to us. This has already happened multiple times since we've been working with them over the last several months. And that means that we need to rebuild from scratch. 
you know, when we do that, that's just kind of, you know, another reason, as said, on why we're going to be doing these the way we're going to be doing them. Um, you know, there's various logistics and everything going on. So as you can see, just as, like I said, kind of a candid show here, the desktop in this works really, really nice. Um, you know, YouTube playback is pretty responsive. Uh, move that over to 1080, see how we do. So there might be, of course, some buffering and everything, but we really feel um, what we're used to seeing as a super that Pine has done a great job here on the um, regarding. USB ports. Go ahead and mute that. Uh, regarding the performance on uh, this this desktop build, so um, you know. So very snappy, um, works pretty well. We're happy with where things are going with this. And, uh, you know, we look forward to, you know, being able to provide these betas here soon for public consumption. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. And I'm going to go ahead and boot back into Emulation Station and kind of get some gameplay going here while I discuss some more items that we have for this episode. Now what I'll need to do is restart Emulation Station to recognize the changes. Go ahead and head on over to, let's see here. Do some Superstar Soldier. So, also getting back to talking about, um, you know, what we're looking at here. Um, with the new hardware that we're going to be testing, um, we have picked up... Oh, look at me. See, look at that. I'm paying attention to the wrong thing. Uh, we picked up the new Magic NS uh, adapter, Bluetooth adapter, to be able to connect controllers. Um, for those that aren't aware, it's um, something that's new to the market. So we're going to go ahead and give that a, a shot and do a bunch of testing on that, see how that all goes. And uh, obviously I suck at this game. Um, but um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and give that a test. And then we actually also have on order, uh, due to popular requests by several users in the community, um, one of the Zenmo uh, two-person controller board kits. So we're going to see about getting that integrated in. Um, we've been able to find some, some solid information now. So we're hoping with some kernel modifications that we'll be able to get it to work Properly, we already know that it does work to a point um, with the XU4. However, reports are that um, even if you have the two-person controller, it's actually not being able to work for both controllers, uh, joystick and, and, and button setups. So we're uh, going to be working on being able to get it to function correctly, and then not just obviously on the XU4, but then also the Rock Pro 64, the N2, and then any subsequent boards that we may add in there. So um, that's some cool stuff that we've got going on regarding new hardware that we're testing. Um, along with those packs, lastly, um, we're not completely 100% sure, but we got our fingers crossed that we may be able to, with these modifications to the kernel, uh, be able to add in some other types of controllers that people have requested that uh, we haven't been able to support up to this point. So we're enthusiastically, but cautiously excited for that to happen. For those out there that are kind of um, waiting for this Rock Pro 64 build, um, there's also the uh, new Rochambeau case. So part of the status on that is that uh, Pine and the Retro Arena are working closely 
for our build to see what we can do um, regarding, of course, obviously supporting the case correctly. So that includes the, the different switches and buttons on the case. And then not only that, but also doing internal testing for the SSD carts that people are being able to purchase, which are, I believe, in the flavors of 128 gigabyte, 256 gigabyte, and then the 512 gigabyte. Um, you, of course, can still plug in your own 2.5 inch SATA SSDs or hard drives as well, but these are products that are designed to work with the case to, you know, to give it the more uh, feeling that, you know, it's authentic. So let's see here. What else are we going to take a look at and play? We'll do a little bit. Some, uh, take a look at some Pac-Man here, 4K. Now as well, regarding the N2 release, we know that there's a lot of people out there that are super excited and looking forward to the N2 case. And, excuse me, N2 case. Um, N2 beta build that is going to be coming on the way as well however we are working to get the Rock Pro 64 build out first as we've been working with Pine for a fair amount of time now and uh, we want to make sure that we get that out the door first uh, especially with the amount of time that we've been working with Pine on it so oh man I died all right, enough Pac-Man. Pitfall, Lost Caves, Caverns, excuse me, man. I never did very well with that one at all. 